Hi, so for those who came to my live stream, uh, thank you. I'm not going to do a name check because I'll, I'll leave someone out and I don't want to do that. Um, but uh, I'll be doing those periodically. I thought that was a good live stream. We covered a lot of topics. Um, I do those periodically. I always say I don't set them for any specific time simply because people will, there isn't one consistent time that everyone will be avail available. Right, so to get to the point, um, there's been a lot of um, focus on this uh, incident which involves the felling of the famous tree at Sycamore Gap on Hadrian's Wall. This is uh, the headline today, well, the 29th on the Daily Mail. They actually had it as a main cover. So that's a good picture actually of the tree because uh, if you don't know, for about 300 years, this tree had been growing. Uh, there may It may have once been part of a larger woodland. In fact, the whole of England before the Norman Conquest was heavily covered in woodland. It's now, um, you know, far, far sparser than then. But this tree was not just any tree. It was a landmark of northeast England. Um, if you don't know, basically, it was a sycamore tree that grew at the, well, as this picture shows, at the show you again. This part of Hadrian's Wall, which sort of dips down into a gradient access, which is the Roman villa around there. I'll make a mistake, not a villa, a, a fort outpost. Um, I had the fortune to go there about seven years ago, eight years ago, when I was working for my local university. Um, we showed international students around, mostly Chinese and um, Arab students. And uh, it was quite a big tree. It was about 300 years old, and some shit has come and felled it in the early hours of the 28th, cut down. Now, I think deliberately felling any tree that isn't diseased or part of a, a specific organized license program is, is a crime, it's, it's a bad thing. Um, but to actually take on this tree, it's disgusting. And I'm gonna quote what the, the mayor of North Tyne, North of Tyne mayor, the North Tyne Mayor, it's one of his new mayoral positions, said, I think he's spot on. Jamie Driscoll, North of Tyne Mayor, said, uh, the perpetrator must be brought to justice. People have had their ashes scattered there. People have proposed there. I picnic uh, there with my wife and kids as part of our collective soul. And one of the hairy bikers, the famous presenters, said that, um, by the way, that was a quote in a report by Liz Hull. One of the hairy bikers said, you know, basically it's torn out the soul of Northumberland. Um, that's not verbatim, it was along those, that, that gist. But it's angered a lot of people and upset a lot of people. Um, it was part of our collective heritage. I mean, Hadrian's Wall itself, for those who don't know, it's a world heritage site. It was the extreme frontier of the Roman Empire. There was another wall that's not quite as well known, the Antonine Wall in Scotland. But collectively, Hadrian's Wall and the Antonine Wall, um, built around the 2nd century, early 2nd century AD, were the frontier of the Roman world, basically to stop Pictish invasions into the province of Britannia. Um, and the, the tree itself was famous for the film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. That's why it's often known as Robin Hood's tree. If you know the movie, notwithstanding the inaccuracies of uh, British geography that are famous in that film, the scene where Robin and Azim are going towards Robin's home, which is in Nottinghamshire, but you know, we'll leave that aside. Um, he famously saves a peasant boy from uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham's soldiers and the guy of Gisborne. Uh, they've got big Irish wolfhounds and they're chasing the boy down and he climbs up the tree. Um, it's a famous scene in the film. So it's known as Robin Hood's tree. And then, of course, Robin takes them all out. And there's a whole speech about, you know, the sheriff is staying off his land. But um, if you know the movie, Nottinghamshire is a long way from Northumberland. But that's that's beside the point. The tree was also featured in the Brian Adams song, Everything I Do, that went with that film and in many other pieces of cultural reference. Uh, it was famous for the Aurora Borealis. Um, a lot of beautiful pictures taken at the site. Now, 
um, there was a storm the other day, Storm Agnes. So I, I wonder if the perpetrator thought that people would just assume it was storm damage. But, you know, in 300 years, there will have been a lot of storms. And that's quite a remote area. I mean, the nearest town, Hexham, probably is the nearest sizable town. That's a good, I would say, 20 minutes from there, at least. At least. Um, Northumberland, it's one of the larger counties in England by area, but it's also one of the least sparsely populated. It's only got just over 300,000 people. My point is, you know, for this isolated site, this isolated tree in a remote county, you know, that's not just an act of drunken stupidity, that involves some planning. Someone has specifically said they're going to go out and cut this down. Now, a 16-year-old's been arrested, he hasn't been named, I think it is a he, um, and that second person's been arrested. So, clearly, the police are taking this seriously, rightfully so, um, but it's, it's not only upset this whole region, people around the UK have been commenting on it and it's even made international news. I saw this being covered on a Philadelphia news outlet. Um, but it's just so disgraceful that some will be so self-centred. So, I mean, that is an attack on society. It's a rebuke, an F you to society. Because whoever done this would have known its significance. They would have known. I compare it to tearing up one of the Dutch old masters or spray painting the Great Pyramid or Stonehenge, I honestly think it's comparable. I'm not sure what a comparison would be with another, well, let's say one of the Great Redwoods in California, the famous Sherman tree, which is reputed to be the world's tallest tree. Imagine if someone was to, uh, its location is deliberately not known, so it is protected, but imagine if someone fell that in the middle of the night. I mean, this is um, a disgrace. So I hope that when it comes to trial, I hope the book is thrown at the person. I hope it is a custodial sentence because some people might say it's just a tree. You know, it's not an, a violence against a person. But the significance of this, I think it was um, a provocative assault on Northeast culture. I think it was callous towards all those who had memories of the place. I think it was, it's a lot of things. I'm sure that several crimes have been committed, not just the vandalism in itself. Um, not uh, Probably not Terrace Pass because it's a public land area, but it's. Um, I hope they throw the book at him. And, you know, I'm sure his lawyers are queuing up to say, or they're, they're pramming to say, oh, he has mental health problems. They have to do their job, but it, it must be a custodial sentence because I think a community sentence wouldn't reflect the seriousness of this, the, the strength of feeling in this region has to reflect that. I'm not saying that justice should be solely on public emotions, but the presiding judge has to take that into account. Has to. Um, now, the fact that it probably was planned, and you could tell by the cut that it was a chainsaw, indicates that this may there may be more to this. This may be some distorted protest. Now, I don't know who, who done it. The 16-year-old hasn't been named. Some are saying he was a disgruntled National Trust employee who lost his job. Um, I wouldn't at all be surprised if it was the likes of Just Stop Oil doing this as some sort of shock protest to say, oh, well, the planet's dying, look how upset people are. I don't have evidence for that. They haven't been named, um, may not have been named because they tend to publicise their crimes. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was some sort of stunt like that. I mean, this was an act of spite. This was an act of maliciousness. This wasn't some drunken stupidity, especially not when you consider the physicality that's involved. You know, even with a chainsaw, it's a pretty big tree. It would take some time to do that. Um, it's outrageous. Not to mention the bird life that probably use it as sanction. So um, it's a very sad thing. There is some hope, though, because they've said that there's a possibility that a sapling can grow out of it, a possibility, but it's not guaranteed. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts, especially if you live in this region. I share the feelings of many. I'm saddened and, and disgusted by this act of just stupidity. Um, and I think it's telling of a more, a wider yaw problem that we have in this country. I've heard of other sites being vandalised, um, also in the Republic, rather than like Neolithic sites being spray painted and stuff. It's, it's some nobody comes along and just destroys history. It's 
outrageous. I think the book should be thrown at them, and I hope it is. Um, wonder if Kevin Costner made any statement. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to, but it's 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 become iconic, you know. Let me know your thoughts if you live in the north of of England, or if you know, you know. I mean, it wouldn't just be people in this region. An American guy mentioned that he proposed to his wife there, so people have those sort of memories. So outrageous. Really 